All right, so I'm going to init this patch. I'm not going to save it because it's not the best. Um, init the patch, and what it uh, automatically gives us is this wavetable um, algorithm. All of your wavetables, if I were to zoom in, again, wrong wave in. All right, there we go. Okay, all of your wavetables are here. So you can choose a bunch of different wavetables. They've got heaps of them. Some of them are from the original Waldorf PPG. Um, there's a lot of new ones. You can also import your own or take a recording and analyze it and then use that as a wavetable, just like, say, Ableton's wavetable does, right? Um, so let's just have a listen to a couple of them. I can do this on the screen. It's not, it's not just the position in the wavetable that can give us a different sound, it's also how we process that wavetable, okay? So we've got things like FX. So if I go back to the simple one, FX here it will drive overdrive the wavetable, okay? So you'll get saturation in the sound. The spectrum knob, or this one up here, either or, will shift the spectrum. It's almost like a sync-like type sound. So it compresses the spectrum, either positive or negative. There's also a noisy parameter, which adds noise to the wavetable. Wave Let's go down the octave. interesting thing with any wavetable synthesis is that modulation of the position and all, all of the other parameters. So you can do that in a couple of ways. We could dive into the mod matrix. We could say LFO1, change position, etc. Um, but there's, there's directly on the interface, there's a knob which is called travel. And that allows you to determine how fast the modulation will travel through that wavetable. Okay, so let's have a look. I'll just turn it up. So this is the travel knob.
Now, unlike your virtual analog, you don't have a way to automatically get width. Um, but that's where having multiple oscillators is really useful. So what I'm going to do here is um, open up oscillator 2, choose wavetable. I'm going to choose the same wavetable as what we're working on, but you don't have to, of course. So it's called mallet sign, mallet sign. Where is it? Oh, I've lost it. Must be there. It is. Okay. Um, and I'm going to modulate the position with the same LFO, but I'm going to do it in the opposite direction. So we go negative. Okay, if we see that, if I zoom in, you can see you can see that I've I've got LFO one going negative, and now I have to choose where it goes. So we say wave table one position. All right. And then what I like to do to get these kind of really thick sounds is I go to oscillator one, press it again, gets to the control page, and then I can pan the first oscillator, right? So we've got the first oscillator moving in the left and then second oscillator moving in the right. I should change the um, octave of this one because we're doing it quite low, I believe, yep. Oh, sorry, I've, it should be wavetable two position. Sorry, my bad. So that's a nice way of getting th a thickness and kind of richness and, and this, this panned thing going on, which is really nice. Um, another thing that I like to do is then start looking at all of the other um, parameters and say, okay, what, what else could I, could I modulate? Um, and maybe rhythmically as well. So um, one parameter that gives us almost like a kind of art articulate um, approach is to use the effects parameter um, almost like a drive that you're that you're attacking with an envelope or something. Okay, um, so we're going to just I'm going to turn off oscillator two. And we're just going to use oscillator one. So let's change its panning back to the center. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn the FX right down. So we've got this warm sound. free envelopes. So if I select over here, one of the free envelopes over here, so um, free one, you see this one here, and I'm going to put it in loop mode. All right, so what loop mode does, AD loop, means I'm going to loop the attack and the decay of this envelope. Okay, I've got to start it again. Let's just change the sustain a bit. You'll see that it, it shows you a, um, a visualization of that, that loop. All right, let's just center this off, sorry. Okay, cool. So now when I press that, you see that looping there? Okay. So it's looping, but it's not modulating anything yet. So we're gonna go to the mod matrix. Choose a source. That source is going to be free envelope number one. And its destination is going to be wavetable one's FX parameter. Okay? And we're going to give it an amount. Let's change this to K length. filter.
using any filter modulation, we've got a sense of timbral movement, right? So just to prove this kind of flexibility of modulation, now what I want to do is I want to grab another um, uh, LFO and then map that to that decay time because you saw that changing the decay time was changing that speed. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to go to mod, uh, source, LFO, let's say LFO2. And it's destination now, if we scroll all the way down, destination two is free envelope decay. Okay, so now LFO2, which we'll choose to be um, slow sign, slowish sign. When I give it an amount here, So we've lost that width, right? Because I took off um, oscillator two. The last thing I'll show you here, and we're gonna go um, dive deep into some of the effects as, as well as the other parameters next week. Um, but what I'd like to do is add an effect that I use a lot in this system and also in, on my modular and in, in Ableton to give width, and that's to use a chorus um, or, even a, um, or even short delay. Um, maybe we'll actually use short delay. Um, so I'm gonna go into effects here turn off the effects, go down to delay. I'm gonna unsynchronize the delay. And as you'll see, when I unsynchronize the delay, ooh, when I unsynchronize the delay, the delay left and delay right has a time on it. Okay, so if we go into the millisecond range, we've done this before with kind of Kapler strong synthesis, then I start to get um, kind of ringing out delays. So feedback is usual delay feedback. I'm going to turn the dry wet down. Let's have a listen to the way that this sounds. So there's no effect yet. Okay, let's open up the delay.
Can, can we hear that the, the, the timing is not synchronised? Each one of those bouncing balls going at different rates while starting at different times. The reason is, if we go to your LFOs, and this is the last thing I'll say, the LFO is in polyphonic mode. Okay? So it means for every key that's pressed, the LFO restarts. Okay? You can have a global LFO. generally synchronized together or you can have them completely unsynchronized all right so I mean most of this stuff will be familiar to you in using other synths um, particularly I think the the wavetable stuff for those people that use serum or, or massive it won't be too um, far off from your experience but hopefully um, gives you a, a bit of a rundown on what, what I love about a, a hardware synth even a digital hardware synth like this is that your sound design is all in one place and you're you're away from your computer which is which is you know um telling you a lots of lots of other things that you could do musically um what i often like to do with sound design as well as you've noticed is really just kind of drone things out and then work with modulation um, next week we'll look at the sequencer and we'll look a little bit um, more in depth at things like arpeggiation and things as well as modulation matrix matrices um, but i want to get into the granular side of things because it's fantastic um, as well as dive deep as deep as I can in the time that I have in the the, um, the FM section which kind of rivals the DX7 to be honest like it's I mean there's a lot of things that rival the DX7 let's be honest it's a it's an old machine but um, each one of the operators in the FM isn't just a sine wave it can also be a wavetable so it gets gnarly really really fast um, all right session one done thank you I'll see you next week <coughs> you're welcome